The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC, Redefine, VCE, innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade, say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And we're back with our live coverage from EMC World. I'm Stu Miniman and my co-host for this segment is Steve Kennison, the storage alchemist. Uh, EMC World 2014 in Las Vegas. Uh, I, I, I believe there's somewhere between 13 and 15,000 people here. I haven't heard a, a, a full count yet. And we're digging into cloud. And joining us on this segment, I, I, I can't believe it's your first time, <laughs> uh, Barb Robidoux, uh, who's a, a VP with EMC Global Services. Barb, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, yeah, it's we great were, to be we here. Yeah, we were saying, so this fifth year we've done theCUBE, so often you've been here with some of the executives right. pulling the strings, knowing how much effort goes into make a show that you know just looks you know looks great and, and customers are having a great time and learning a whole lot. So you know, glad to get you on the set. It's, finally, it's absolutely great to be here on on this side of the camera for a change. <laughs> so. Uh, you're involved in, in one of the more interesting things going on at the show. It was, it was previewed a little bit in the keynote. Right. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, talking about cloud. I mean, you know, some people can just, you know, swipe a credit card and, you know, go buy a service up in the cloud. Right. But you guys, I, I believe, are actually building a cloud. That's exactly right. Yeah, we uh, we ran out of three-letter acronyms, so now we have a five-letter acronym. <laughs> um, it's uh, how do you say it? Bacle, right? Build a hybrid cloud live. Uh, and, I, I, uh, you can say it. I don't think I can. <laughs> so the, the whole idea here, though, was. Uh, I, I think the, um, uh, the benefits of cloud are fairly well understood, you know, right? Doing things faster, saving money, et cetera. Um, but there's a, you know, kind of acknowledgement that getting there is difficult. And um, what we wanted to do was show that, you know, while it is hard, um, it is not impossible. And uh, basically what we're doing is we're going to uh, stand up a hybrid cloud in 48 hours, live. Wow, so I, I mean, you know, when I think about just, you know, if I'm deploying a storage array, you know, we usually measure that in months. Right. So, you know, w w what's the goal of this? What, what are we lo customers looking to learn sure, from this? Sure, sure. Um, so it, it is software defined everything. And, um, you know, we've always talked about cloud and IT transformation in sort of the three main categories of transforming infrastructure, transforming applications, and transforming operations. And, um, and so basically what we're going to do is all three of those things. So from an infrastructure point of view, you know, we'll actually um, stand up the cloud and um, you know, we will show um, you know, automatically provisioning software-defined storage a la Viper to the cloud. Um, we will show how you provision tiered backup. Uh, from an applications perspective, we'll show um, automatically provisioning you know, sort of enterprise applications like SAP, Exchange, um, SQL, but then we'll also show from a, from a user point of view um, how you can self-provision a Simplicity account. And then from an operations point of view, um, we'll show things like how you can do automatic, automatic chargebacks and really how to get started with, um, with automation tools like VCOPS. And, and then really we'll sort of profile three different use cases for you know, why are you going to hybrid cloud in the first place. One is simply migrating workload from a, a, a standard data center you know, out to a service provider. Um, one is actually doing a, uh, a restore uh, of a VM back to the primary data center from the service provider. And then the third one is a true HA shared workload environment between, between both environments. So it'll be, uh, it, it, it really is kind of an all-in type of uh, demonstration that we're going for. Yeah, so you know, EMC you know has a pretty broad broad portfolio. Um, in the video, I saw you know this was not you know it didn't look like you know the Google or, or Facebook data centers, which is just like you know this giant row of you know unnamed stuff. Right. Um, I, I saw V blocks in there. Yes. I saw you know a lot of the different storage products in there. That's you know, right. Data domain and everything. Can, can you give us a, kind of a snapshot? What's in there? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and how did how did the choice go into? Sure, what, what sure. So so together? you know the reference architecture. Uh, is variable. You can build it with a, a VMAX or a VNX uh, or a VBlock. Uh, and then, of course, the whole data protection suite, and that's the, the EMC infrastructure, Viper. Um, the particular um, configuration that we have at the show here is basically based off of two VMAX, uh, sorry, two VBlocks. Um, so that's, that's sort of all in. Viper will be there, the data protection suite will be there. Um, and then, in terms of management and orchestration, that's all of the, uh, the VMware suite. And um, I don't think I'm. Um, I don't think I'm revealing any, you know, trade secrets here, but the the idea, the the sort of the big hairy goal here was to um, start the cloud build out on Monday, 
so that by the end of the day Tuesday, I think when we go into area 53, which is the end of the day Tuesday, that would be about the 48 hour clock. So from area 53, we would sort of do the big unveil, you know, ta-da, it's here, it's live, it's working. The problem that we encountered is, um, it's a good problem to have, um, but you know, when you, um, you, you go to the Grand Prix, you don't want the pit crew seeing the car for the very first time. Right. So, you know, we did a little practice ahead of time to stand it up, tear it down, stand it up, tear it down, and make sure we, we knew what we were doing. And the reports that we were getting all last week were, uh-oh, um, it, it's only taking us about 10 hours <laughs> to stand this up. And should we wait and, you know, maybe get working on it, like, later Monday night or Tuesday so that we can time it backwards and still have the big unveil? And, you know, we all sort of said, hey, look, you know, we're at a show. You know, you gotta give yourself plenty of opportunity in case something. Um, so I expect in the video we're gonna see them stopping for a pizza break. You know, maybe <laughs> yeah. going to the circle bar for yeah. you know a quick drink or something. Yeah, it's gonna sponsors. be a big, big line through you know 24 hours or yeah. 48 exactly. hours. It's gonna happen in 10 hours. Sponsored yeah, by the cube. Sponsored right? by, you guys by the are cube. Right? They've, they've got go. time to stop by and do the charity water event over That's here. That's exactly it. Yeah. And, uh, no, that, yeah. That, that's so good. It's, it's a great problem to have. Yeah. You know, knock on for Micah here. Well, actually, I think that's pretty interesting. I think from our end user practitioner perspective, I think there's a lot of questions about how I get started and yeah. what do I do and that kind of thing. And now that they can actually see, you know, you know, it's almost like me when I write a white paper, right? I never start it and it takes forever because I don't really want to know how to get going. You're really helping them lay the foundation on how to get going, what are some of those pre-thoughts that I should be thinking about because you know, if I don't know where to start, I probably am, am not going to take right. that first That's step. Right. So, and then, and then, you know, the services that we're wrapping around this, um, they, they sort of fall into three categories. We describe it as sort of, you know, before, during, and after. So, um, in the early phases beforehand, um, we have an assessment service that will help the customer, you know, figure out the exact configuration and whether or not it should be a V block, a V max. Do you need Viper, et cetera, et cetera? So, the assessment service will actually help you figure out what the exact bill of materials needs to be. Um, that's optional. Um, then, you know, while you're actually doing the implementation, what's bundled into the solution um, are the implementation services. So that's where EMC professional services technology implementation experts will actually stand it up for you. Um, and, and also in there is what we call our infrastructure automation service. Um, so, you know, we have a lot of customers that, you know, maybe aren't as familiar um, with all of VMware's automation tools. Um, so this is where our experts will sort of, you know, hold your hand and together help you stand up a couple of workloads and do the knowledge transfer and make sure that you know how to use the tools. That's all, you know, sort of bundled in, you know, during as you're doing the setup. And then afterwards we have a, a whole bunch of um, value add services that are designed to really optimize and, and, and really take this, um, you know, from just being infrastructure as a service to you know, getting a self-service portal going and a, and, a, and a catalog and being able to do those chargebacks and showbacks and things like that. So, so we were talking to Peter just a minute ago, so I'm just going to poke at this a, sure. a, a little bit, right? Um, part of the big value proposition we've seen here, both at EMC World, as we've, you know, I was at EMC a long time ago, as you know, so as, as we've come forward, I had a lot of openness and a lot of, uh, a lot of ability to run a lot of different platforms on the EMC, you know, hardware for, from the infrastructure standpoint. Um, and I realize this is a, you know, a canned demo and you want to get it all right, but I've heard a lot about VCOPS and EMC here. What about like other tools, like other virtualization tools, uh, both from a virtualization server perspective, but, but the tools to do monitoring and that kind of thing? Uh, how, how open, or can you elaborate on how open it would be to kind of switch things out if a customer had a different kind of preference sure. but wanted to use yeah. EMC infrastructure? Yeah, to do it today at the show, it would be very difficult. It'd be difficult, right? <laughs> <laughs> but in general, um, right now, we have um, basically custom PS services where we will work with, you know, whatever your um, incumbent um, tool set of choice is. Uh, we're working to take those from custom engagements to sort of packaged, um, you know, fixed scope service offerings, but today it's a, it's a custom engagement. And I think that fits into the Federation strategy where, you know, we're spending a lot of time at this conference talking about the Federation solutions, but keep in mind the reason why we have a Federation in the first place is to allow EMC and VMware and Pivotal to go to market with the ecosystem partners that they need to go to market right. with independent of you know, each other's own competitive basis. So it's, it's very much part of the strategy. And that's what, when Stu and I were talking to uh, Peter beforehand, I think, I think that's a great message to get out there with, right? So, so you don't feel so, so trapped, not, not that you would, but, but to know that I have that freedom of choice and freedom of independence, I think, uh, gives a, another layer of credibility to kind of what you're doing. When, when you say cloud, you can't, 
you know, and I think it was coined it, you know, whether it was Oracle World or something, you know, cloud in a box, right? right. Well, is that really cloud, right? And you really want to be able to step out and have that freedom of choice. Right, so I think right. that's a good message. And, and it's funny, I don't know if it's a psychological effect, but as I find as I'm talking to customers and we talk about the federated model and the reason why we did it, which is for the openness, it's, it's almost removing an objection before they, they voice it. And, and I would say more than 50% of the time, the next reaction I get is, hey, that's a great strategy, but what happens if I want to buy it all from EMC and Vimmer <laughs> and Pivotal? That, right? It's like, great, we love that, <laughs> of course. Right. But if we didn't have that open federated model, I'm not sure if people would just automatically go there with us. Be the big question right, mark, right? Right, right. Yeah, so Barb, from, from the services group, you know, how much are you learning from helping customers you know, spin all these up? How, how do you kind of get the, the, the crowd information back and, and, and feed that back into the, yeah, uh, it, the, it, the, the it, services? It, that, that's a great question. So um, one, of, one of the things, believe it or not, that's different about services today um, is we, uh, we now have a portfolio, whereas a year and a half ago, we, we didn't, everything we did was custom. And so now we have a portfolio. We're actually following EMC's product-based internal Six Sigma process, it's called Regatta, um, for how we bring new services to market. So it's all based on um, field and customer requirements, you know, documented, um, uh, well they're not PRDs, product requirements, right, they're, they're services requirements. It, it's, it's all documented and we're, we're basically following a process there. But um, one, one of the interesting things, just to maybe focus on one example for a minute, um, back to this build a cloud live model and those add-on services, um, at EMC right now, you hear a lot of talk about workloads, 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 it's all being driven by workloads. And so, um, one of the add-on services that we have, uh, we call it Cloud Advisory, and it's where we sit down and look at the customer's workloads, and um, you know we can make suggestions about which applications and which workloads are even suitable for cloud. And then, for those that are suitable for cloud, um, which type of cloud architecture, um, you know, private cloud, virtual private cloud, hybrid cloud, public cloud is, is best for it. And our approach is a little bit differentiated in that we're not sending smart consultants running around with these giant spreadsheets trying to interview Figured customers and put all this data in and hope there's not a error in the cell. Um, we actually have a, an automated you know, data analytics engine that we're ingesting the data in near real time and um, very, very slick outputs that are like readable by human beings and we can scale, so we can look at a lot of applications very, very quickly. So that's an area where, you know, we are starting to see some traction. Yeah, so, so you know, I've, I've talked to like VCE a lot, and one of the things they've learned, and it sounds like you've learned with this cloud deployment is, if you work on your processes, you know, you can speed things up. So, you know, is, is that one of your biggest takeaways from, from this cloud environment, or, you know, for the build a cloud, you know, what, what have you learned that you think customers can take away yeah, from Yeah, I mean, it's going to sound like a cliche, because I think we all say it all the time, but it's less about the infrastructure, and it's much more about the people and process. Um, I, think, I think this experiment and, and Peter's solution um, is trying to make the process side of things easy, easier, um, and then the next frontier to tackle will be the people side of things. All right, well, Barb, appreciate you coming on and talk about the Build a Cloud Hybrid Service Live, Build a Cloud Hi, uh, uh, Build a Hybrid Cloud Live. Yeah, it's tough for me to get that out. Just I, go with a five letter yeah, acronym. Five letter acronym, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I, I wish we could shrink the time on some of the other things that we're working on as much as you guys are doing there. So thanks again for thanks sharing for with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, on theCUBE, uh, we will be right back with our next guest.